July 14th, 2020, 604, and we're going to begin the curriculum and instruction meeting for Danny Boone Area School District. In attendance is myself, Beverly Albright, Tanya Bell, Mr. Cooper, Jennifer Leone is on the phone, Julia Olofsson, and Preston McKnight. The first thing we want to start out with is the Summer Academic Connections Update. Okay, um, the, uh, we kicked off, uh, I mean, it was tough, guys, as you know, appreciate the effort from the board, but it was tough to get that kicked off in a timely way, given you know, some of the approval timelines and getting everything out. So we would have liked to be able to support our teachers a little better than we were able to get them up and running. But, uh, you know, we have some ACEs that signed up for that on the teaching staff, so they were, you know, quick, quick learners. And then the people we have coming in from the outside uh, also, it seems relatively seamless at this point. I was able to talk to a parent whose child is in the program, is the chair. Uh, you know, I was kind of looking at where we were after week one, you know, we're having kids. And relatively smooth. Um, Curtis uh, Fleming did a very nice job sending links to all the K to five, so I could drop in and out and so could anybody else um, see you know, some of the instruction that was going on, the synchronous work, so forth and so forth. So um, early on, um, if, you know, for me it's always a well, lot to me when they're little because I used to work with that group. They, they were engaged, they had kind of poor response, they were, there was work happening. Um, and there we pre-assessed, attendance was 80 to 90% of the original signups, which is good, very good. I think we were, kindergarten had two sections of 11 each, uh, first grade had 22 or 23, and second grade had 22 or 23, whichever one was an opposite. So, that's a nice number. It's, these are not necessarily students who are strugglers at all. Some are, but, but a lot aren't. They just wanted to connect with learning. Um, so after that, then it was more sporadic. The higher we went, the more sporadic it was. Um, the primary was very strongly intended. The high school had 46, I think originally 66 and some signed up. We ended up getting 46 kids to actually engage the program. So um, at the end of the program, there would be a, a post-assessment. And then we're going to track those students all year to see how they, you know, was it beneficial, did it pay a dividend over the whole, whole school year and bridge that gap. So we want to, now we have three to go, about two and a half of this already. So, so far so good. Uh, do you guys have any questions about that program at this point? Okay. Uh, I have recently called it the David Boone Virtual Academy, but Dr. Cooper uses executive power to rename Laser Virtual Academy. Yeah. So it will no longer be the DPBA, but just the BBA. And we were briefly talking before the meeting about a model somewhere else. Um, this year we'll save, we'll save approximately $50,000 going to the current model that we uh, over partnering with BOL. So BOL, uh, we retired that partnership with the IU, but we're using exactly the same um, online provider. The IU is acting as a middle. They're gone, we have our system built out and within 6 to 12. We are also fine, should we need to, uh, and have a big request for families who don't want to come into school based on the virus, we're fine. We have quotes to go K to 5 as well. If we need to do that, we'll bring that to you if that's the kind of feedback we get uh, from uh, our families if depends on where that falls. So uh, that will be up and ready to go. And if we can be fortunate enough not to have any. If we have a successful school year without a tremendous amount of disruption, we may very well be able to go fully blended learning uh, next year. And Scott will talk to you more about that to kind of get into the fall uh, without partnering with an outside vendor at all, but using Danny Moon curriculum with Danny Moon teachers to deliver that model. That really is the goal, is that opens us up in our MTSS model in a hundred different ways that we can talk about, um, helps our students do internships and apprenticeships in a more effective way. So you know, that is where we're heading in the two to three year plan down the road based on these variables. Questions on, on the Laser Virtual Academy. So Laser Virtual Academy, is, is that not what we would be using for students who don't for any reason uh, aren't able to come to school for an extended period of time like being on a quarantine or something? Is that may or may not. So in okay. each case you need. Uh, if a student is, says, look, I am careful, we are not coming back in those buildings, then yes, that's what we, this, this okay. model. But if it's a student who 
maybe not for a handful of days, we have a cohort of 25 teachers who volunteer to, to do develop our blended learning model working with Scott Tools and Triads. That's going to be developed in the fall and we'll launch the second semester in that 25 staff member cohort with the intention to be the chiropractic next summer and launch it fully into it in the following year. So and those will be for people who aren't necessarily going to students, I'm sorry, for students that don't intend, at least at the beginning of the year, to be in virtual learning the whole school year. Correct. Okay. Correct. For whatever, whatever the circumstance is, you know, there's so many. As you know, we have, need to have a lot of flexibility, but we create right. the possibility of a lot of flexibility. Okay. So I just want to clarify, is it fluid, as in, I didn't get the, quite the answer to your question, like if someone's going out, can they jump on that and then come back, or is it not? If somebody who goes out, for example, one of your kids wants to go out for three weeks, uh -huh. we, would use, we would operate through our cohort teachers here in the blended model. Okay. Okay. If it's a student that says, I'm not going back for a long, long time, uh, so okay. a semester, uh, a year, then we have this full week. Okay. Okay. You know, but the, the full intent is to eventually um, cut off the partnership with ingenuity and right. fully implement our later virtual but just with our um, extension of what the pilot is. Okay. I just didn't know if it was like a back and forth because I know that that's what some other districts are doing. It's like going to just kind of like we have to be on the same spot that they are in their curriculum and then it's supposed to be like a seamless so whether or not that happens is. So, but so for, for people who are in a short term, like, you know, less than a, less than a full quarter or something, you know, short term, that that is the intent to have, be able to come to school and to be home for two weeks for a quarantine or something and doing work through that, through the... No, he's saying through, a co through, through the other teachers. Right. So our, oh, our okay. model, right, our model now is to have, here's the long term goal, which we're building out to something this helps Someday, ultimately, is we want to have on-demand learning for our students anytime, anywhere, with our daily new teachers at okay. So the devices that we're putting in play are these pieces. The short-term solution also is to have this partnership with Ingenuity being our curriculum, the curriculum that we need to have there. And there are many variables, you know, how many students will stay home, how many teachers will not be able to come back. Yeah. Home. Yeah, so we're aware of all those things, we just don't have the hard information yet though. Exactly, like we'll keep you guys up to date on it. Each each time we have a great meeting, we keep this on the agenda. For instance, we'll, we'll be surveying um, our parents the correspondence going out this Friday, and the first two sentences of that correspondence will be linked to the survey to try to get a better idea. For those folks who are attending, we're having their kids come back quick and hard, and those who are attending to have their kids stay in an online remote environment starting on the school. A professional learning update. So we have uh, we had a, a full day principal uh, planning meeting today. When I say opening the 2021 school year, I confined my work uh, in the Office of Academic Affairs to a green mindset. Like this is what we do in the district. Rob and, and that team, that stakeholder group, are looking at the red and yellow scenario. So I always think of that that's the how. What we're looking at is the what. And that's not going to change. What we do doesn't change regardless of how we start to lay that out. We need to have our kids achieve X, Y, and Z. So uh, in the principal planning meeting today, um, we, we dealt with host issues. But one of those things is we drafted, we drafted out the entire uh, professional development calendar for the whole year, um, dealing with some issues I know that uh, this is all right and spoke about. Um, in terms of, for example, how are the specialists in the MTSS model being trained, supported, going forward to, to launch the year. Um, and we also, so that since the opening green, if we do open in yellow, um, we have the full PD calendar for a yellow hospital as well. And that really drives a lot more, you know, blended learning, uh, you know, on how to do synchronous and asynchronous, in which we've trained in the spring, but we're going to have to go back to that quite a bit. So, you know, the green phase opening, Bell phase over in terms of professional learning for the first three days. Um, Discovery Education is heavily uh, partnered in the pieces then in September, October, November. Um, we also have uh, the map assessment and the CPT assessment training happening. So those are all the tier one pieces of MPSS that we continue to support to get our standard training. Question on professional learning. 
Okay, the other topic for tonight, and then probably the biggest one, is the Director of Elementary and Continual Learning position. So, uh, I know there's been a lot of conversation from last week to this week, and I uh, wanted to share out the why. Um, you guys as a school board have taken a lot of recommendations from us regarding the MPSS model, not only in terms of staffing, uh, but as well as uh, material, uh, curricular materials. And, programs. and I think that we are, we think that it's been a great and exciting year and looking at all the stuff that kind of has now framed. This position is, in my opinion, critical to support much of that framing. Now, one of the things that we to continue to support the elementary folks, because I talked to Dr. Cooper, uh, I have background experience in the virtual side, I'm glad to take the virtual piece on, uh, where that was on Dr. Sarah Pino's played before, uh, on the way to, to the gates that to pick up all those pieces. Pretty, so it, it's a pretty big load to, to, to do the elementary piece as well as that. Now, I have oversight department with this person, obviously, as I did with Dr. Sarah Pino. Yes. Um, the continuing learning piece uh, is the other great piece. How do we continue to support our teachers in this entire model? Really, it's the more important piece of that model. Oh, yeah. We're all hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so, I'll answer any questions you have around the position. Uh, I know Dr. Cooper certainly can as well, uh, but it is my strong recommendation uh, that we have that position. Um, it, it creates continuity of leadership as well. Uh, I think one of the things I appreciate under Dr. Cooper's leadership is every time somebody's moving on, we look at how to more than what we're supported and do it in a cost effective way. Um, and how do we stage for long-term stability and long-term growth? Other people are going to you know, move on from other opportunities in life, and this keeps us in position in the right way to continue to grow and grow the rest of the time. Questions? Questions? No. Um, is this a position that uh could potentially be filled internally? Do you have somebody in mind, or is this? Well, we, 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 will, we will post a position. I do anticipate that we will have an interest um, with a few people that are currently on our administrative team. Um, I haven't really engaged in, in a conversation yet uh, as I was waiting for direction from Right. I would say this is about internal people. It's philosophically, we'd like to look at people internally and develop our team as we think it raises the world. It's our opinion that excellence is just a bunch of years of doing it. And so, if you keep turning over new people, bringing new people in, you'll run mm -hmm. um, kind of like a disjointed environment. So, we would certainly would look there, you know, in the internal first, and see if people are interested. If not, obviously, we look outside. I guess. Yes, go ahead. You're in the, the mic. I just wanted to know if the Yes, at this point our plan includes the, you know, as of July, let's say July 14th, it's 618, uh, based on the current guidance that we have from the Department of Ed and the Department of Health, uh, the intent of that, with that plan is to bring students back for in-person instruction with the health and safety plan. Now that was at the work of the planning task force that has been meeting for the past couple weeks. We have the final meeting tomorrow to kind of firm up that plan. But um, the other option we would be providing for our families is if those folks are not interested or comfortable having their child come back, children come back in an in-person learning environment, we would provide the online option for them. Uh, we do have the devices, one-to-one -one for the student. Uh, it was a 
approved by the board. So um, last, it was this past spring, we went to a, a K-12 uh, iPad model for the kids. So that would be an option. That's it. Did you get? I don't get a vote. So. I know, but are we supposed to vote? Can we vote? No. Vote Jennifer, are you comfortable recommending this position? Ms. Leone, did you, could you hear that? Are, 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 you, are you comfortable uh, with casting your vote to moving the uh, director of elementary continuing learning forward for full board vote to special vote? Yes. Okay, and I am as well, Ms. Bell? Yes. Okay, so I guess we're moving it forward then. Yep. Okay. Um, is there, I don't have anything else on my agenda, Preston. Do you have anything else on yours? There's always a standing item if anyone would like to ask any questions about standing item to certainly answer those. Um, that's kind of been work over the last year. Those I have lots of questions. Oh, God. <laughs> Um, There's a, a typo on page 73B, no, I know, right? second, second paragraph. That, that, that's, that's now our sports <laughs> challenge. That used to be my burden. Now it's So currently, the, is the plan for uh, kindergarten, uh, that we're not doing assessments for kids for placement, for, in, in, you know, for like figuring out where they are until they get to the school. So that, that, that's true. We have a lot of conversations about how to administer the yeah, yeah, yeah. and It's not really something you can do not in person. Correct. So we had conversations, and what we went is getting that assessment when they start, and then moving kids a couple weeks in, which is a transition. Sure. But we get them a full day service then. Yep. Not. So that's a conversation we, that, that, that we're having. And we do have room A because we, we voted. To make available three, three days. There's three full That's days. Right. Yeah, and we voted, we voted to make that available if, if it was necessary. Yeah, three, uh, maximum what, 15 or 16 or something? Yeah, it's generally 15. Yeah. So it's um, just going to be chance for them to be initially placed in that and then moved, we're, we're, or? We're working it out. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. And but also, I, I would think that we have a little bit of flexibility for that reason, and also there, I, I there could be, there be fewer students than normal. So I, I wasn't yeah. part of the vote, like just explain to me what the three days. No, not three days. Three classes. You're fine. Three. You don't need okay. yeah. yeah. No. Yeah, Thank you. Oh, no, that's fine. Full day came from the way away from the day. One or two. Wait, two. Yeah. And now we're three. Like and three. Yeah. yeah. So it's about who do we put in that? Tanya just thing. thought she had ever kid two we days a week. Have, we might have voted to advocate for that at the last <laughs> No, sure but we've always. So I missed it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I thought I remember that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
mean, I, I can I can share with you, you know, what, what the task force has preliminary plan with the green phase open with every all students back with you know significant mitigation and, and uh, you know, providing shields and masks and classical devices that are portable for students. Um, but the option is should we go to yellow, the recommendation of that task force was that we go to some type of a hybrid model. Yeah. There were different ones that we looked at. Um, the one that came out of that was the option of four days of in-person instruction with half of our students, while the other half of the students for those four days for that week would be doing things asynchronous uh, remotely. And then the following week would be the other half, um, four days, Monday through Thursday, and everybody's uh, virtual and remote on that Friday. The, the rationale behind that was to get a 10-day period of time between groupings of students yeah. uh, based on the science and the research and the, the period of time between simply showing up um, for the no, Yeah, I thought that was a good option the ones that were Great. Okay, so I'm going to go